All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to a special session for North Court. The Council is our annual strategic planning session, and it's a welcome to the folks that are here today in person, and a welcome to those that may be viewing it online. As everyone knows, we do record our meetings and upload them to our YouTube channel, so it's convenient for members of our community to be able to watch their local government in action as we strategize for the future. And uh, I'm going to just move on down here into the order. We just have the, the one, uh, well, several items, but all related to planning. But before we get in to that, council would like to acknowledge that we, um, hang on here. I'm so like, oh, there's Jim. Yay, we have Jim, Jim O'Shea. Come on in, I'm just starting the meeting, Jim. <laughs> Um, Council acknowledges that we meet on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabeg, in particular our neighbors from Curve Lake and Kawartha Anishinaabe First Nations. We recognize and honor the original people of this place we call North Kawartha. As duly elected representatives, we, we follow this Indigenous practice of acknowledgments to foster respectful deliberations, thoughtful collaboration, and wise decision making in our service to this community. Okay, and with that, I will ask if anybody has a clear interest with the uh, any of the matters before us today. I don't see any, so we'll move on. And adoption of the agenda, please. I have a move by Ruth Ann and seconded by Jim Whalen. All those in favor? The agenda is adopted. And we're going to just move right into the business of the day, which is our strategic plan. And I'm going to turn it over, I guess, to you, Alana. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> Um, so I did include the first four items are for reference documents. So basically the full entire strategic plan that's available on our website, the snapshot, the strategic economic development plan, as well as the snapshot of that plan as well. So we can probably move into new business item two, if that's sure. Yep. Uh, so basically, we have the um, progress report. So last year at the end of 2023, we did a progress report and included the items uh, speaking more to the specific actions as well as other items that were accomplished that fit within the strategic plan. So we have updated this report uh, with the help of all the managers and staff uh, with 2024 updates. Uh, and in some cases, as I'd like to sort of step through the report, mm -hmm. then we can um, talk about if there's, this is a good time to have discussion on the items that were put into this plan originally for the 2023 to 2026 timeframe. Um, is there something that needs to be added? Is there something that needs to be changed? Is there something that we're looking at a bit of a different time frame? So I kind of look at this as a bit of a working session and if council has questions or wants to discuss certain items or if we get input uh, from the other managers or staff on the items. Okay, so we'll move into the first item. Uh, and this follows our strategic plan. The first pillar is infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And the first item is 1.1, ensuring existing infrastructure is sustained prior to expanding or investing in new infrastructure reflective of our asset management plan. So the items listed below in uh, blue are the items that were listed as specific actions for this time frame. So the first item is the long-term financial plan. And uh, I know the treasurer, Judy Everett, has been working on this and gathering some information. And we currently have it on plan for 2024. And I'm not sure if there's anything that Judy wants to add. Yep. Or, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's quite a project. Um, currently, I, uh, I do have um, a sample plan that I do like, and I'd like to go forward with it. I looked at different ones. They range different municipalities, do them for five years seen a couple, I saw one for 20 years. I'm, if it's okay with council, I'm, I'm gonna recommend 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I see where sometimes they get amended to, you know, it's almost like a living document kind of thing where you look at it and, <clears throat> oh, COVID happened, we're gonna have to change this, or this happened. Um, it's quite a projection, um, you know, whether you go 2% increase for certain items, 
So I am working on it and uh, I have reached out to um, Michelle Fisher, the uh, certified professional accountant for County of Peterborough to see if she would kind of help me go along with some of it as well. And I've reached out to a former um, treasurer who's retired and uh, see if they maybe look it over too once I get to a certain point and I, it should be presented by the end of this year. Can I ask you, Judy, just um, because I was just, we were, Atlanta, I was talking with Atlanta about that when we talk about a long-term financial plan, but how is that different from what we are doing? Because we have, we're legislated for asset management, right? Which is like super long. It's to the end of life for most things. Um, we do capital forecast, which is a 10 year out, right? So what is this? How is that different or how does that, you know, add or enhance or does it? So it gives you a kind of a projected or possible picture in 10 years, mm -hmm. or you look at revenues, possible expenses, so you're going to look at increases on salary grid, increases on um, your items, your <laughs> capital items, right? Um, you know, material supplies, okay, how much might they increase over so many years each year, uh, interest on your bank account, where you'll be in reserves each year. It is it is quite involved, but it, it is different in the asset management plan where that's saying this is how much you should put aside for capital. Okay, so and that's and it's and it's deeper than what we're already doing with our capital forecast. Oh yes, yeah, it covers your operational and everything. Okay, all right. Okay, so anybody have any? Yeah, Jim. Uh, Judy, uh, so far. Have you seen any surprises, like any big items coming up that you see that, uh, hey, you know, I bet council hasn't uh, thought about this because this is going to cost us a fortune or anything like that? It may not at this point yet. I'm just still projecting, uh, looking at the figure, getting into that. That would be presented. Okay, thank you. All right. Anybody else? Any so it says on plan for 2024. So you're thinking by end of year, you'll have something to bring forward? Yes. Okay. All right. Everybody good with that? Okay. So we go on then. Okay. Uh, the second item is complete an assessment of service levels and classifications on roads identified in the 2019 road tour, including the replacement of Howell Lake Road and providing notice of changes. So there were quite a few accomplishments in 2023. We adopted minimum maintenance standards. Uh, we are still working on the housekeeping bylaws for some speed limits mm -hmm. and uh, looking at some of those items. Uh, the Talon Lake Road culvert, um, as council knows, we did adopt the five-year uh, surface treatment plan, which took a, quite a bit of resources this summer. So I would maybe look to Jason to see where if this is something that's still on plan for 2024 or are we may be doing it in 2025. So yeah I, we're planning on 2025 right now I think we're okay. getting a little bit uh, out of our time frame for that type of work. Okay it's just that fun that that project has been on since the very beginning right it'll be nice to uh, address it yeah go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, we're just replacing the culvert. I mean, um, um, this road isn't isn't drivable anyway. Um, um, so we're doing this for the snowmobile club, uh, or should we be dropping this road completely? Well, uh, through the chair, if yeah. I may. Um, I'm not really sure. I don't know the history of it completely, I guess, is my best answer. Yeah. Um, but I think further on in the strategic plan, there is a bit of an item on limited maintenance roads. And I think, you know, from our department, we're looking for more of a, a definition of what a maintenance, limited maintenance road is. Um, and I think for the public and for the staff, like how we're going to deal with those roads in the future. Yeah. Yeah. So if I can just add to that, um, when we did the road tours, um, we did identify several roads that are either limited maintenance or maybe we shouldn't be maintaining at all. So the intent with this would be to um, get the culvert updated and then bring a report forward with notice to the public that we're going to no longer service that road. 
Yeah, and I think, and I remember going back, and this was you know, sort of 2018, 2019, actually, um, the discussions around that was, because there had been some work done in the past and culvert, and it was, anyway, there was something there, and, and um, but what had happened with the crazy spring, whatever, and the culverts had blown, and then it was sort of, I guess this side was like, well, we're gonna walk away from it. It's like, well, we really can't do that. We, we can't leave the, it in the state that it is. And, um, but you know it's complicated with it's on private property or whatever, all of that stuff too. But I think that was always the intention. It's like let's get this fixed up and um, to a good condition. I mean, similar to what we talked about with the road rationalization with the county, right? It's like you know you fix it up and you hand it off in good repair. It's like okay, now we're done, right? So let's hope that we can we can get that squared away for in 2025. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh -oh. I was talking to somebody on the road and they said the road was in beautiful shape compared to what it used to be. Uh, must have a great um, grader operator. Are we grading that road or did it just uh, rain enough that all, all the stuff fell in the right place? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> to the chair, if I may. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that happened, but <laughs> we, uh, we did have our excavator in the hot fall and did some work and moved some material around mm -hmm. and tried to dress the road up the best we could. Uh, with what we had in there. I do believe there's some private landowners in there that may, you know, go in themselves and <laughs> kind of fix it up. So I don't know. I'm not saying that that has happened, but but I, I do think that's a possibility too. Jim, did you have your hand up? I'm sorry. No. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. All right. Carry on. <laughs> The next action is update the road minimum maintenance standard bylaw. So the bylaw was completed. Um, we're still in the process of looking at discrepancies in the level of service, as uh, Jason mentioned. <clears throat> and uh, with the updated MMS, we also um, have brought in the P PDS citywide uh, software program. So that has been being used for our route patrol. And next year, or at the end of this year, uh, in relation to the 2025 budget, we're looking at purchasing the tablets for each of the vehicles, uh, which will improve our, our service of being able to track those routes. And also, uh, Jason has been using the new system for work orders. And I don't know if Jason wants to add anything to that, but uh, the work order <laughs> seems to be working fairly well. We're not fully automated yet, but we're moving in that direction. Yeah, yeah I can speak on it a little bit. Sure. Uh, so right now we look for deficiencies either via the public calling in or us uh, not noticing them on a route patrol. Uh, we create work orders. Usually on a route patrol, we create the work order as we're going. Mm -hmm. uh, they get uh, right now the method we're using is we print those work orders off. They went in for the crew. Uh, they go through the work orders and then we sit down and meet and discuss the work orders that are incomplete and what we can do to get those done. Um, what we're looking for, though, is more of a streamlined process, I guess. So the tablets, uh, the crew members can complete those work orders on site. So when they do the job, they don't have to return the paper copy to me and then I have to go in and close it out. Right. They can close it out once the job is complete. Um, and we're also looking at maybe a bit of a hybrid uh, fleet management aspect of citywide later, uh, a little later next year. Um, so it will tie in with our GPS systems we have in our equipment and can help us with, uh, you know, service intervals and it will alert us when something's coming due for a service interval. Okay, good. All right, I'm pretty good with that. Okay. <clears throat> And the last item uh, here is initiate a request for proposal for 135 Burley Street renovation. So this is the old bank space, uh, which we visited quite a bit in the last year. Um, so we have a song for QB 2024, the development of a request for interest uh, being developed. And I think that maybe Edward can speak a little bit to this one. Sure. Um, yep. We one thing is we're moving forward with a survey of the property because we don't have one and uh, I plan to bring forward you know, to council some recommendations uh, probably two cases of what is potentially possible with um, marketing and leasing up that that section of the building okay <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, continuing in the same uh, the theme structure category, we have complete Mount Julian Mine and Growth Project. Uh, that project, the road was completed. Mm -hmm. uh, the warranty meeting was held. There were no further concerns or warranty issues. And uh, I believe that uh, we just received the results from the tender with the county for the installation of the added guardrails. If council remembers, uh, Jeff had mentioned that with the reconstruction, there were some areas that now required the guardrails for a bit of a safety issue. So those uh, amounts have been in. Uh, initiate another request for proposal for the North Court to Health Center renovation. Uh, so renovations are underway at the North Court to Health Center. The, um, that includes mainly the uh, Peterborough Family Health Team space, separating that space, the accessible washroom uh, into the, moving it to open into the foyer, uh, some internal renovations, and then the next phase would be looking at the outer um, expansion of the waiting room and any further changes in the doctor's wing. So uh, we were successful in getting a contractor who's been doing a great job for us over there. And uh, I believe I mean, Matt maybe can say that we're close to completion of that portion. That's right. So the Everything but the flooring should be done by the end of September. Um, and I think we're hoping to get uh, the new flooring installed by the end of October. Is, is, is that yeah, we have another site visit uh, with the flooring company and the installer this afternoon. We've had a few site visits already, but Matt and I are also working with the doctor to try and install some flooring that is amicable to everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we need to expand the uh, waiting area? I, I, every time I go in there, there's one or two people, period. <laughs> is, there, is there really a big need to expand the uh, waiting area? Colin's got a comment. Oh, yeah. Colin. So okay. I, I haven't spent as much time there recently as I used to. Um, well, obviously. <laughs> it, it builds up rather quickly. And also with the expansion um, of the washroom and opening up into the foyer, making it an accessible washroom, a chunk of the existing seating is being taken up by that. So we probably lost about 30% of the seating area with that part of renovation. Okay. Well, that's because you wouldn't let us go into the other room. <laughs> okay. And I think uh, part of the idea is to sort of modernize the look of the NK um, HC Health Center and bring it in line with those, the other municipal buildings, modernize it a little. Yeah. <clears throat> So that work is ongoing. Uh, our grant does end the, in December, but we also have money from another grant that's not time limited that will use when we go out for quotes for the next portion of the work. And we'll be bringing the report back to council. Uh, the roads tour was completed. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, I just wanted to quickly check one thing. Um, if we aren't able to successfully get this done in December, do we have an alternative? Sort of project to spend that grant money on lined up? Uh, no, it has to be used for the purpose yeah, that it was okay. obtained for, and we do think we're going to be close to using the full amount. Okay. Thank you. Um, schedule of roads tour did occur. Uh, we didn't have another one in 2024. Uh, the five year road surface treatment paving plan in conjunction with the capital forecast, uh, it was adopted uh, and uh, at the November 2023 council meeting. So this report does have some further items from 23 because of course we look at scrap plan in September. So there's more yep. the fourth quarter items. There's no questions. Uh, so talking to County of Peterborough about the transfer of Bomber Road in the county's portion of Jack Lake Road with the township. Council did just receive the draft uh, transfer rationalization road transfer rationalization policy from the county. So that's another step in the direction um, uh, looking at these specific transfers. So they would go through this process uh, and then we would look at financing it if it passed mm -hmm. to move from the county to the township. Question? Yep. Um, 
the um, surface tree didn't have better days, could you? Down on um, Boone Lake Road and so on. And, and it looks really, really good. Are you uh, pleased with what the result? Uh, through the chair, yes, I am very pleased with the result. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy that the weather held out for us. Oh, isn't it though? It's perfect. <laughs> it's coming back for tomorrow, apparently. <laughs> Which is good. And has anybody been in Balmer Road? The far end of Balmer Road is beautiful. Um, it's, um, but that's as far as they can go this year. I think they've got, what, five kilometers in or four kilometers, something like that. I thought the Doug City was going to, they were going to try and complete it. No. Oh, no, they were never going to try and complete it. They were going to try and get another two kilometers. And ah, okay. They gave up on it. So they okay. pulled all their equipment out now. But it's, um, um, <clears throat> the, the road is so so different than it was. I mean, it's just a beautiful flat drive. You were in, Edward? Yeah, on Saturday I did the studio tour. So I went, you know, like, yeah, through. <laughs> Quite a switch, eh? It was, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it was in good condition, you know. And it's wide, you know. So. And they took some of those hills down where those entrances were. They took the tops off some of those hills. Is there a completion date for the project? Well, next year they're okay. hoping to finish it. Right? I was asked that question yesterday. Yeah, yeah well, I'm sure. <laughs> next year. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're hoping that next year they'll, they'll finish the whole thing. So that's a 12-month span. <laughs> yeah, that's a big road. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, oh, they, they've done really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. all right. Okay. Uh, and in this draft working document, um, a little bit of a housekeeping item here. Since we haven't done this type of a progress report, I was wondering, and I put a mixture in here, uh, whether to list additional operational achievements by year or just integrate them into one list uh, and combine like items. I don't know if council has a preference, but I don't really have a preference, but I think it's good. I mean, we have our our, our plan of what we want to do, and there's always all the other things, right, that come up, right? Like, if you ever keep your own list, you know, I always like, I completed the item, write it down, <laughs> scratch it off, complete the item, right? That's so my list is always done. <laughs> but, it, you know, it's really good to, um, you know, to make sure that we do capture all of the other things. Um, because, yeah, I mean, especially <laughs> when it came to the community center, it was like, Gary, had a lot of fun this uh, past few weeks. <laughs> but, but I mean, that's all important stuff. I mean, that had to get dealt with and taken care of, right? So, yeah. yeah. And this is where it would fit yep. under our strategic plan in maintaining our infrastructure. So I don't know if Council wants me to go through the list of 2024. We know. Where does everybody, everybody's cool like we, we know what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. we're right. We're what we've been dealing with. Yes. Yeah. I understand and comfortable with all the ones listed. Um, for this period of time, if there was a motion made through the year on a project that related to this, to add it. Yes. I was going to say that. Do we want to add? Like, are we going to go through all of the infrastructure or this particular section? Um, because yeah, there is something that needs to be added, right? That we that we made the motion. Well, I'm thinking about the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah, right. That we said we want it to be budgeted. Yep, this for. would be the appropriate place to, okay. and I think we would add that as an action. So the yep. bold or blue. Okay. Yeah. It's yep. the, yeah, it's, it's definitely. I was talking about that. Okay, so that's what I think. Because we did talk about that it was back in May, I believe, when we were talking. We had the gentleman here about the sidewalks, and it all kind of ties in with sort of like the master plan for absolute. But we all recognize, I think, with that that unofficial parking lot, that it really should become an official parking lot. Um, it should be, you know, developed and created in such a way that it's, um, you know, that it, that it provides for efficient parking, but also maybe allow for future potential growth if that could be an access point, you know, if there was, you know, um, residential development in behind. But I also think um, we, we would have, because we have rules and regulations around parking, right? So we would be able to enforce, you know, have, you know, things when it comes to that parking lot whether you know overnight you know all that kind of stuff right what can be parked there whatever um but i think especially if we're looking at potentially altering parking along the roadway throughout town and maybe eliminating some of those spots we definitely need to make sure that we have uh, a properly designed parking lot there right yeah. yeah so there are two i mean there they are similar with two different directions so we do have the downtown master plan coming 
Mm -hmm. So we can either wait and see what comes out as a result of that downtown master plan with the intent, and we can tell uh, whoever mm -hmm. we hired to do that, that we're looking to put a parking area there and how to incorporate that. Because as you mentioned, there was a discussion about the manageable curve from the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So that would all kind of roll into that plan, but we could also list it here. And I'm thinking it may even fit under plan infrastructure development with demographic so needs. Uh, which is the next one coming, but it's certainly we don't want to lose sight of it, and this is the appropriate place to have it added into the strategic plan as an action. So, would it be council's desire to uh, wait until the master plan is complete and then fit it in with that or work on it sort of at the same time? Yeah, um, yeah I'm all for starting the project now and then the master plan just including whatever work has been done at that point. I think there, there's a few items that are going to be included in the master plan that we can probably predict and this would be one of them if we had an act on it already so we may as well move it over. I think and that was certainly um, from recalling the motion that was the intention was that we include it you know with our budget so we can have this done for like in 2025 so like as soon as we're able to get in there in the i guess the early spring and uh, get it done because i think that's the intention regardless we re we recognize that uh, the lot is small there are some challenges with it I and mean, in the past you're looking at you know potential commercial you know development or whatever but at the end of the day you know, having that parking lot and it's convenient and it's used, it's already well used as a parking lot. So let's just make it proper and official, right? Okay. And then we can control and manage it accordingly. So yeah, I say, yeah, we're doing it. And what kind of treatment is council looking for in that area? Or you want us to come back with quotes? I guess maybe with quotes, Different. but I would say pave it. I agree. Right? Okay. Like. You Let's better, do it. You better make sure of the survey first. Yep. Well, that's because it comes within a few feet of the guy's deck. Well, that's what we have. That all part of that has to be. That has to have a survey. Has to be done. The survey. Yeah. Has to be yeah. Um, to probably just rec yeah, to check, um, recommend the survey, but also taking in the consideration if we are paving to uh, rep and conduit for potential EV yep. uh, stations as well. The cost to rough in the conduit is very cheap. You know, if we put it in before paving after yep. versus afterwards, uh, you know, uh, picking it up. So putting that in, in the plan as well. Yeah, so definitely 1.2 plan infrastructure development, demographic needs. And and, yep. and lighting as well. And lighting, so, yeah. Yep. So just having a lot even if we don't have the lighting and, and you today, yep. at least have it, it's a lot cheaper to put that in beforehand. Then, um, yeah, no, absolutely. Don't get the pavement they put in at the store. <laughs> oh, gee, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's why the store is so it's all blocked off. Yeah, they have to the pavement is so, so soft. So when you make a turn with your wheel, it's a bit of a pile of the, the pavement. Well, I was talking to them the other day, and they're, uh, they're beside themselves. Okay, well, all of those things, right? Because even, you know, in, in terms of, like, how it's going to be laid out, right? What makes the most sense? We need to look, yes, at the name of the properties, the, where the property lines are as well, too. Because, um, yeah, there's going to be some challenges and issues that arise when we uh, officially make that a parking lot. So in regards to obtaining engineering and design information on that lot, are there other features that council would like included? Do you want to make a grassy area? That's what I was thinking, whether there'd be a bit of a green strip. It may be as a buffer, at least on the one side, there's there a fence. There has to be a buffer on the front so people can't park their car there all night and all day. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> definitely that. Um, but I think that... Um, at least along that one side too, because like I said, if we're thinking about future, we want to have like the infrastructure in place to allow for like, like you said, the conduit, all that kind of stuff. But also if, you know, it becomes a roadway or an entranceway at some point in the future, say, um, but still, I think you could have, you could provide for green space along the one side. Yeah. Yeah. Green space and particularly green space large enough for, um, putting some dining table type items because this summer it was identified by Sayers 
every time I went by yeah. um, that, that there was a dire need for mm -hmm. seating and eating areas because it was well used and it wasn't always their product. So I'm grateful that they didn't yeah. go out and start kicking people off mm -hmm. of their tables, but yeah. uh, there's certainly a demand for it in town. I, but I think, and this kind of goes back into the master plan though, but with our 135 Burley Street, and we have that kind of, a, we have that courtyard there that mm -hmm. is not, not well used at all. And I think there's an opportunity to create mm -hmm. a little bit of a town square or something that has little tables and chairs and, you know, benches and maybe on some umbrellas and maybe some planters get rid of what's planted underneath. Right? Like, I mean, we did our walkabout and I think I talked about that Edward, but it's just, so, I mean, there's a need for it, but does, do we put it where we're going to have a parking lot or do we, I mean, I still think that there could be benches there because somebody's going to walk their dogs or whatever, have garbage receptacles or whatever, but definitely, in that courtyard area at 135, that is a perfect spot to have, you know, outdoor seating that anybody can use, right? So, yeah, I'm looking forward to all this coming back. <laughs> is there, okay, so that was like, I think you said was we kind of jumped forward to, we're into 1.2, right? Yeah, I think I'll list that as an action item under 1.2. Because it's not it's existing, well, some of it is the courtyard, but the existing infrastructure, but we'll uh, get that sorted in. So, can then I just ask, so like, so that we go back, we just went through 1.1, yeah, right? Is there anything that we want to add specifically under 1.1? We're going to carry on. We're doing our surface treatment plan. We're doing like all of those things, right? Like I don't, we're just going to kind of carry on with a lot of the projects that we have already listed, right? The action items, right? I just don't know if there's anything else that anybody can think of that we should add. If not, then let's just move on. Yeah. Okay. Our asset management plan also gives us you know, some information on what's coming up for replacement. Right. This thing. So we would incorporate that into budgets. Sure. Okay. Okay, so we're into 1.2 plan infrastructure development with demographic needs. So we did complete the facility tours. Uh, no further facility tours have been scheduled. The council was interested in some. We did publicly. What else do we have looked at? <laughs> no, but no, I'm just, I'm just here. I'm asking, right? Like, I, I'm not. No, we looked at everything. We pretty much looked at everything, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> I have to go down to Norwood or someplace to look at something different. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I just ask if it's under here, additional operational achievements? And I'm not sure whether it comes under here or if it's someplace else, maybe under environment. But we, you know, we talk about with Riverview Park and part of the overall plan with that, right? We're looking at like the green space plan, right? Was, you know, having um native you know species showing but I'm, i always think about like using it as like a demonstration for people to show them you know how um, this is how you can maintain a naturalized shoreline that still provides accessibility and, and everything else but um but protects from erosion and all that kind of stuff and the pollinator gardens but but it, it i look at it as like that's one part of a larger plan that we could have like a green space plan um, even though, yes, we're surrounded by trees and lots of green space and stuff like that, but I look at the front here, we've got all the grass there, we've got all the grass there, we've got areas where, you know, do we want to, cut, like I said, come up with a plan that, you know, that's consistent throughout and that we look at these spaces and maybe, you know, have them designed and developed that they're not just grass we have to cut. Yeah. Almost like a parks plan. Yeah. It's there's obviously a parks and rec plan. Yeah. Um, but then specifically that parks are green space. Because then when we have that identified space, yep. you know, the going plan and the policy and what we want to do with, you know, just sort of take it off the boxes. Yeah, I um, think because we do have, I mean, you know. And even doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, sort of green space. Like when you talk about 135 Burley Street, I mean, that's great. You know, and, and the new parking lot, having it, having somebody, you know, professionally design it, you know, so it can serve that purpose as well, too. Because just having one spot, as I think Councilor McClellan mentioned, is it probably going to suffice, you know? Um, and again, we've all seen how busy town can get now. And, uh, 
And and again, as mentioned, it's not necessarily all to one retailer either, right? And it may be people even just bringing their own and so on. So yeah, I think identifying all these different spaces and what each space could be used for, because maybe you don't want, you know, picnic tables and a family picnicking, you know, right here, but, you know, somewhere else. And I'm not saying that names for disrespect, but it just as an idea. It's fun designated for a certain thing. Yeah, no, and I think we have some local, like, uh, like resources in terms of, you know, businesses and, and, and members of our community that would certainly, um, be able to support that. But I'm thinking like even the example of like 135 Burley Street, there's that living square piece of grass, right? Yeah. That but I mean if we're looking at making that like a seating area, maybe we don't have the grass there. Leave a spot for the tree. Mm -hmm. The tree we cut down every year, the Christmas tree, right? So but, but you know what I mean, but it's just like so like but you could still have we have beautiful planters, right? I mean that we could have you know and that's part of maybe that that park plan too is coordinating the the baskets that we have and the planters and things like that and expanding upon that, right? So, um, because even that grass there is so hard to maintain, I don't care how how wide that sidewalk is, people still keep cutting it off, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's always uh, it's just crazy. So, um, yeah, and if you're yeah, gonna have tables and chairs set up there or something, then yeah, you're like, what the heck, it's yeah. not gonna all excellent ideas. So, yeah, but yeah, definitely, I think, as I said, like, and with our plan. growth, I think that's something that maybe we didn't recognize 15 you know 20 years ago but now you know we start to recognize the need for these things yeah okay. yeah go ahead so there is uh, another section of the plan where we have recreation master plan so we could look at uh changing that or having two plans uh but i know there are i've seen some uh examples in trend lakes where they've incorporated open space and trails um, as well as the recreation plan. So something we can certainly add. Maybe it don't look like it needs to be a standalone plan, but incorporated into an existing makes, makes sense. So we can look at some examples. And, but I, and I think it overlaps. Like I think like it, it goes for infrastructure, but it goes to like our services to our community. It goes to environment. If we're talking about like, you know, like the, the native species and, and you know, pollinator gardens or what, like it, there's a lot like that, this action or that plan can, can create a lot of actions that can be applied like throughout our strategic plan, right? So. Yeah. Okay. Any other all right, we can put it wherever it needs to be. <laughs> okay. Is so, there anything else that we need under that one? Plan infrastructure development with demographic needs. Anybody have anything to add? We just kind of carry on with what we're doing. I think that the sidewalk issue could fall in here a little bit as well. I'm working on it here. Well, I think, but then it comes back to sort of the master plan down to my lazy like that's said there's a lot of overlap that's going on so um i think we're going to capture that elsewhere so i don't know if we and then maybe so maybe right now we don't necessarily put it there because it's like maybe one part of a bigger yeah a bigger plan that we've got a bigger project right yeah we're going to the next one sure uh, facilitate the creation of more housing, including new builds, multi-residential, secondary dwelling units for the following markets, senior families, but affordable, that should be affordable, not affordable. I was going to say, <laughs> can somebody please tell me what an adorable house is? Have you seen those tiny homes, man? They're so cute. <laughs> Look at that. I think we did something here. I think we have adorable housing development. That's cute. Uh, so we have added um, here a reserve for the purpose of purchasing property and completing studies to prepare properties for municipal purposes beneficial to the community, including housing development, will be considered in the preparation of the 2025 budget in Q4 2024. Uh, so we, I think there was some discussion back and forth about setting a, a reserve. So the question that would be coming to council if we want a separate reserve, and I look to Judy for any comments on this, mm -hmm. um, would be how much do you want in that reserve? So currently what we've been doing is when something comes up, like wanting to survey the Balmer Road property for development, we brought it to council and taken it out of general reserves. So 
it is a little bit difficult to anticipate what the costs of the future studies may be as the properties develop. Uh, but we can certainly do it in a separate reserve. So I don't know if Judy wants to comment on that and perhaps never. Yeah, just for direction and for saying how much. And as council is aware, we did uh, combine the reserves a few years ago. And um, there's nothing to say we can't set up a separate one for specific reasons. So I believe that was recommendation of the auditors to keep it, to keep it down. Yeah, to keep it down. But yeah, we could do. We couldn't have another one if, if we choose to. Well, I wonder is that, like, you know, I, I, I think because I think the idea behind it was it, that having that reserve that demonstrates council's intention. But do we have to set up reserve in order to have council's intention, or do we create something else, like a, you know, like you know, uh, you know, a policy or a document or something like that 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 says, hey, council is going to wants to invest in this kind of thing, and um, you know, why and because it could still like I was thinking like you would take a segment of the general reserves and just say, okay, we're taking a million of this, and that's going to be for this or whatever, but. The end of the day, if we can just come back and say we're going to take it into general reserves because we're following the policy that we've set for ourselves, it says like, hey, we're we're looking towards the growth of the future of our community. Yes, that that's true. And you know, each year in the budget, it will show we're putting this much in to general reserves for this purpose. So we have that. So, so okay, Jim. Uh, I I definitely think there has to be a reserve. Uh, we see how important these surveys are now. Um, you know, if we didn't know before, we were as well now. And um, 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 the one for each piece of property that we go to develop is going to have to be done. So we better start building up some kind of a reserve. We can't just keep taking stuff well, out of general reserve. Well, we can, but as long as we put it in, that's what I'm saying is that do like, I mean, and I, so you do it before you do it after. Well, it's just but, but like I'm thinking about what the auditors have said, right? Is that, you know, you're not trying, we have used to have, remember, we used to have so many reserve and reserve funds, right? There was a, so much. Um, but the idea of, yes, specifically budgeting for like every year, like, you know, we're going to include like, you know, like, let's say like quarter of a million dollars that, you know, that we're, we're going to raise, you know, that's or something to, to, to put into that. But as I'm saying, do we have to spell out, or do we have to separate it out, um, in order to to demonstrate our intent, or because if we're collecting that money, we're doing it, but we do, or do we create, is it some kind of a policy or a document or something? Uh, I'll call in in the lineup. Well, I'm usually all for moving as forward as quickly as possible once spread it and then I don't want to see another reserve open up. <laughs> I've never been a fan of having a ton of reserve accounts. Um, and the amount of time that we had this property for, I don't think the two weeks between council meetings is the great limiting step. Uh, these surveys take a while, even after we order them. Mm -hmm. So I think they still can be brought forward individually, and then we can sort of have some oversight on the project as well. Yeah. And then, but I mean, I went, I'll let you speak actually. I was just going to say that we could probably have further discussion, you know, with the auditors and through our budget calculation, uh, determine some recommendations on what the best way to move forward would be. So is council considering that this would be money raised from um, taxes each year and moved into the reserve? Or do we take it from funds that we receive like OMPF or... I don't know, right? Like that's what I'm wondering about. I mean, I was just thinking too, like creating a separate kind of like a policy, but it's, we have our strategic plan, which is basically that document, right? I mean, we just need to really spend, and we've started it here that, you know, we need things for, I don't know about purchasing property, because I think we're gonna have to have a lot of money in there, but doing the studies and the surveys alone, you know, we, we need to, and maybe it's more, of, do we specify that we talk about, we you budget for a couple of surveys a year, but I think we're doing a lot more surveys this year, <laughs> right? Maybe it's we need to look at it. <laughs> yeah, and then call on. Yeah. No, did you? No, I thought it was you. Oh, it okay, okay, okay. You, okay. 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 you, you got to remember also um, that uh, none of these properties, as we have them right now, work really well. The, they both require acquisitions of other property in order to to uh, do anything. So. Um, uh, this isn't going to be a little little bill if we're going to go ahead with any of this stuff to get these houses completed or to do this housing. Um, 
there's an awful lot of work to be done, first of all, and there's, some, there's uh, meetings with people who own property close to it that we're going to have to buy. There's no way that you can, no way that you can develop the 63 acres as it sits. Uh, yeah, you can. You can, well, you but can. you've got to want to come back down Highway 620. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, that's not that far. No, but I mean, I, and I'm not saying that, that that's like what you're saying to make sense because we certainly know within the Hamlet designation there are other private properties around that would be very suitable for growth and development, and there has to be those things. But I don't think it stops us from moving forward with Bomber, right? But Atlanta, yeah, um, and just in consideration of that, there are, I guess, quite a few future funding opportunities possibly that we could start to look at. Yes. The money maybe towards that even thought to be better than Yeah, I, I, it's mentioned later on, but of course we have the application in for uh, half, but specifically for Bomber Road, I have a meeting next week with the uh, FCM. So if there's one off funding opportunity that we could want, especially for the planning um, phase of that. Yeah, I'm looking to see if there's additional funding that we can get for that to uh, keep that uh, you know project moving forward through the uh, study space and planning stage here. Mm -hmm. So, and then, but I do think it makes sense to talk to the auditors as well to see like exactly what they suggest. Like, it, do, do they think it's important for us to set up something specific, or do we do what we've been doing, which is taking it out of general reserves. And I think too, like Jim, to your point about the intention, yes, that there may be um, um, opportunities that we need to look at when it comes to purchasing, you know, property and, and speaking with, with lenders. So I, as long as that is also included as part of our strategic plan is that, you know, to keep the communication open with, um, you know, property owners and, um, you know, and to see, right, like, what you know, like if they're looking on selling, right, like, I mean, hey, come talk to us first, right, because, you know, there's opportunity here. Anything else? I'll leave, I'll leave it to the financial yeah. experts to decide which way is the best. I don't care how we put some money away, but we got to mm -hmm. start putting some money away. And um, um, uh, does um, Edward need uh, approval to talk to, to uh, property owners? Or is, uh, can he uh, go ahead on his own and do it? I can't imagine that he can, but... Uh, um, does he need authorization here or somewhere to uh, um, talk, talk to the people um, that uh, would really make this a, a fantastic thing or make it just a good thing? I would say that uh, we would need authorization and we would look at those cases specifically. Here we're just looking more generally. And uh, I know Anthony McClellan has a question, but after I would like to have an idea of how much per year. I know you mentioned a 25, 0.25 of a percent, or if we had any kind yeah, of a percentage. percentage. You know, I, I know it's been done in the past, and I'm not sure what the challenges specific to it were, but I'm wondering if it's time to consider having a specific real estate agent. And as far as the information that we're able to get from them for the municipality when going and considering these types of projects. Trevor, did you want to speak to that maybe? Um, I, I'm a, a member of the Appraisal Institute of Canada and a, a fee appraiser, so... Um, I feel like we got I, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> we can uh, get that piece of opinion from uh, a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. um, where we thought there might be an issue with land value, we could engage um, a third party appraiser to do a report and then I can review it. Um, for other cases, it's possible that I can uh, do an internal uh, appraisal for um, if the intended user is counsel uh, for uh, decision making purposes as well. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and that is another option in the past. We have had uh, a real estate person on the ring. So we, look, we could look at all the options as we start to move forward. 
Um, but I'm just going to get back to what Jim was saying too. I mean, you're looking at direction, but are you thinking of something specific like wanting, um, you know, and through ever, but maybe a letter that goes out to particular property owners? Yeah, like, hey, like, I mean, I don't know that we're kind of in a position. Like, well, that, 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 but that's something that may be, right, that, that we may want to look at. That's not my idea, that's for sure. I, I'd approach the important person, but that's up to me. That's just my way of doing things. You're the boss. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, but I mean, this was really nice. I just handed it off. Until we have maybe a clearer idea. Yeah, yeah. we're just talking strategic. Yeah, exactly. Here, so, I mean, I just did that's the thing. And we have to make sure that we have full understanding of, of the folks and the property and their situation as well, too, right? So we know what we're going into and what, what we specifically are asking for. And maybe it's not, you know, a whole entire, you know, say, hey, give us your whole property here. Right, but uh, maybe we just need a portion of it, you know. Right, and what studies need to be done, you know, and how we work around that, right, and covering that. But uh, all right. So we're thinking then, and this is guys. Well, what do we want to do here in terms of a budget amount? Are we are we going to want to put it in here, or are you going to just? It wait doesn't for need to go in here, but okay, since we're going to be moving from strategic <laughs> planning to capital <laughs> forecasting and then into budget, it would be good for staff to know before we have our. Internal meeting on how much OMPF or other funding or funds get allocated. And I'm not sure if we can even use the OMPF for this at this point, but something we could look into. Madam Chairman, just get Judy just set aside a million bucks and we can use it as we need it. <laughs> and the mayor's slush fund, all right? <laughs> And if you're going to aggregate it by adding to it annually, well, that's what I'm thinking, right? Like, I mean, that's the intention. We have a, we have healthy reserves and general reserves, and we were able to make those decisions of like, yeah, we want to do a survey for this, or we want to do a study for this, or whatever. But yeah, if we're looking at going at this a little more <clears throat> intensely, then then we should be planning. Oh. Yeah. There must be properties we're also considering selling. So if we sell those, that goes into that reserve, wouldn't it? I, I would think there's properties when we get the list that aren't useful to us. Yeah, and sure, yeah, that could be used to that. And that may and that sort of be the right of or you know or just that that is our direction. So <laughs> We got all these little little orphan pieces. Can we just get rid of? It? But why not? It would make sense. I mean, if they're if we're looking at declaring surplus lands, that those funds could be then utilized um, or earmarked for purchasing lands. Sounds good to me. Okay. I don't know. We're not going to come we'll up to something right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. We'll go away and have some staff discussion. Then. Okay. I guess you'll be seeing a number in the capital forecast. And, we'll, and then we'll all be like, <laughs> okay. We've talked about half and. Yeah. So, yeah, we have the. Post a meeting with local builders that's still on the planning horizon with our new planning department. That's already in the um, yeah. um, yeah. bylaw committee. Mm -hmm. We got that plan. Right. So it's twofold. I think we're good on 1.3. What about 1.4? Okay. 1.4. So we're just. Uh, which is a bit waiting on the announcement of the red funding. Move in that direction. Yeah. Is there anything else we need to add? Or anything that has been missed under that? Or anything you want to add? It's more for discussion than anything else. If we aren't able to get the red funding, is that something that you think we should move forward with independently and do in house? to bring down costs. I agree that the downtown master plan is a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, or should we just continue to reapply every six months for the red funding and get the official downtown master plan done? Go ahead. I would suggest reapplying if we don't have the funding. Yeah. 
think it's out. Sad. No, I think we're good. <laughs> oh my gosh, we've gone through like one section. <laughs> it's a heavy set. I know it is. There's a lot of one. And like I said, there's a lot of overlap too. We've gone and discussed yes. things that are I know are going to come forward. Okay, so I'm going to call for a five minute recess. Okay. And then uh, we'll go on to the balance. Okay.